you think wine comes in three colours, red, white and pink, then this might well interest you. A growing number of people in the UK are enjoying their wine. In restaurants and in our homes, the conversation will often turn to what the wine is and where it's from. So if you know you're shabbly from your Sancerre, or you want to know, then this is definitely for you. This challenge is about wine. French wine. So off I went to Paris to set our next challenge. This is the Rue Mouffetard in Paris, a street famous for food and food shops in particular, whether you want fish, wine, bread, of course, this is the street you come to. But I'm looking in particular now for a cremerie because I'm after six distinct French cheeses for our latest challenge. The Rue Mouffetard is the original Roman road that ran from Paris to Rome. You probably knew that. It's this history and tradition that also makes French wine so unique. The French made the laws, such as the Appellation Contrôlée, that states a wine can only be named or branded from the area it's made. Champagne can only be from Champagne, Bordeaux from Bordeaux. You probably knew that. Now, cheese is serious business in France, as serious, in fact, as wine. And the French treat cheese much as they do wine, since they name or brand the cheese according to where it comes from. I'm after cheese. Looks like I've come to the right place. Hello, bonjour, monsieur. I need some uh, cheese. Now, what I need is six particular cheeses, three from the Loire and three from the Chablis region. Monsieur, the three from the Loire, Saint-Maur de Torraine, some Crottin de Chavignol and Celle sur Cher, all from the Loire, and from Chablis, Epois, Langres, and Chaos. No, no. Tout le reste, oui. Oui. Oui, oui. Merci bien. Merci à Thank vous. Thank you. Bon voyage. My cheese. Thank you. OK, I've got my cheese. The next stage of our challenge is to find two wine experts who can match these cheeses to wines from the Loire and Chablis regions of France. And the two guys I've got in mind should be arriving in Paris about now. The two gentlemen that I'm talking about are Matthew Dukes and Joe Fattorini. Matthew Dukes is a wine buyer for several restaurants in London. He had his own weekly radio feature on the BBC for five years and presented Channel 4's Wine Hunt. Matthew writes a weekly column for the Daily Mail. He's been awarded the International Wine and Spirit Competition's Trophy for Communicator of the Year. And his annual guide, The Wine List, is the UK's best-selling book on wine. Joe Fattorini is a British food and wine writer and broadcaster. He's written the weekly wine column for the Herald newspaper in Scotland for eight years, and he began broadcasting regularly on TV and radio ten years ago, when he taught bachelor's and master's programmes on wine at the University of Strathclyde. Joe now combines his writing and broadcasting with work within the wine trade in Scotland. This spring, Joe will be appearing in a TV series on the history of wine for the History Channel to be broadcast worldwide. He's been published in a number of books, including his own Managing Wine and Wine Sales. Hello, boys. Hello there. Hello there. Matthew, pleased to meet you. Hello there. How, How are you doing? doing? Joe. I'm Joe. Nice to meet you as well. And you, Matt. welcome to Paris, What's boys. What's up? We've got a challenge for you. Excellent. Yeah. I found a quiet spot to explain it. Okay. Come with me and I'll talk you through it. Okay, cool. It's all about cheese. Excellent. Excellent. Right, boys, I found this pretty park in Paris to set you your wine and cheese challenge. The clues are all here. This is your starting point. I've picked out six cheeses. Matthew, if you take these three, from the Loire region at okay, the front. Lovely. And Joe, these three from the Chablis region are yours. I'd like no you to problem. take them off in your lovely Audis. Matthew to the Loire yep. with these three and find yes. a bottle of wine to go with each of them. No problem. And Joe, similarly, off to the Chablis in your Audi and pick a bottle of wine for each of these three. Mm. Yeah. No okay. Problem. When we come back in 48 hours, I'd like you to taste each other's selection. You're going to taste his choices. All right. He's going to taste yours. This should be interesting. <laughs> I'll have a taste too and we'll see what we all think of your selections. Fabulous. Okay. Got so, fantastic. Good luck. Drive yep. not too fast no, and safely, and we'll see you back here in Paris. Okay, cool. 40 years Cheers, boys. Bye. Two Audi A6 events, two wine experts, one challenge.
Matthew Duke set his course southwest of Paris towards the town of Sancerre in the Loire region. Joe Vatterini headed due south towards Chablis. The journey should take about two hours. Just outside Paris, Joe and Matt went their separate ways with three cheeses apiece in the back of their Audi A6 Levant. Dawn across the vineyards of France. A beautiful day for the start of our wine challenge. In the Loire, Matthew has considered his options matching the region's wine to the cheeses I gave him. These are my three cheeses that Matt's given me. First of all, I've got a saint maur de Terrain from just down the road. I'm going to match that to a red wine from Menatou Salon. I've then got a Crottin de Chavignol, one of the villages in Sancerre. I'm going to match that to a rosé. And Celsochere, which is a gorgeous, light, fresh goat's cheese. I'm going to match that to a white wine from Puy Fume, just over the, the valley there. Joe was also up with the Lark in Chablis. Having considered his options, he headed for his first domain just outside the famous French wine village. The domain of Daniel Dompt would be his first call of the day. Bonjour. Hello there. How are you? Very well indeed. Thank Welcome. you very Welcome much. Thank, you. Thank yeah. you very much indeed. Shall we go and try some Thank of these you. cheeses? Thanks very much. Daniel, this is an absolutely fantastic seller. This yes. is really good. How old is this? Um, I think maybe. 250 years. 250 yes. years yes. old, it's absolutely beautiful. Yes. Right, we have our cheese, which is Chaos, and three of your wines, yes. different vintages and different vineyards as well, I think. Yes. Can we go and try these? Who's this Hello. that we have? My, my two sons, uh, Vincent. Nice to meet you, Vincent. Nice meet and you. Uh, Sebastian. Sebastian, nice to meet yes. you. Thanks for, for joining us. So this is 2004, last year's vintage. A good year? Yes. yes. Nice. Is it very, warm? very typical uh, vintage because okay. in Chablis we need uh, acidity mm -hmm. uh, to to have a good balance to, right. to make uh, typical wines. And 2004 was very very typical Chablis. Mm. Beautiful. <laughs> That's quite a rich style of wine. For I mean, particularly, I'm thinking for regular Chablis. This is a really great. Um, full flavoured, yes. quite intense. I'm going to try it with some of this cheese, if that's all right. If I can pick a piece in here. That's a good French cheesy smell to it. Mm. Wow. Soft and creamy. Mm. Now, to me, that makes a good match. There's a nice balance. You've got the creaminess in the cheese and quite a zesty, fresh style of wine, I think. Yes, it's very good. Superb. Very good. Can we try another one? What's this next wine we have? This is uh, Côte de Leche 2003. Yes. Let's have a look at this. This is a slightly richer colour. I'm going to try it still with some of this cheese, which is nice. Mm. That really is good cheese, the Charles. I think that's a lovely wine, but it is, it's, not, it's not shabbly enough for me, I think. Yes. So we'll try one more. This looks very interesting. 2002, another 2002, good year than yes. this. Uh, and this is Les Lis. Interesting stuff. Again, I've, I'm finding this is quite a light colour. Here we go, I'll cut some bits and pieces here. Mm. That's a, it's a really nice match and they, and they work very well together. And it's inter interesting because it's that zestiness that comes back. But one of the things 
I'm finding it's almost too complex. This is a, it, the, the cheese and, yes. and the wine are, are maybe battling against mm. each other a little bit too much. Um, so you know what I'm going to say? For our cheese challenge, I think it has to be the regular Chablis, 2004, fresh, very nice, and a fantastic wine. I mean, really superb. Daniel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Vincent Sebastian as well. Thanks very much. Right, now it's off to Michel Laroche, and let's see if we can't find a wine to match up with Ipoise. Henri Pellet, just outside Sancerre, was Matthew's first choice. So we're driving towards you now. We'll be with you in about 10 minutes. Yeah. Is it possible for you to get some of your wines ready for me? Uh, yes, yes, Fan no problem. Fantastic, and we're looking for um, a red Manitou Salon. Welcome back. Matthew has just arrived in Minatu Salon, the first stop on his wine tour. The art of touring is not dead. Loads of my mates jump on planes and go on package holidays, I don't. I want to drive to my destination with all my kit on board and my kids, get out and see the culture and the art and really feel where the wines come from. And this sort of car is absolutely perfect for that. Hello, Mathieu. <laughs> Bonjour, Anne. Bonjour. Ça va? Oui, bien. Il a l'air super, votre fromage. Nice to see you. Yeah, this is my cheese. So <laughs> you've got some, some reds for me to yes, taste. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. These are all Manitous. Yeah. They're three different cuvées, so three different styles. This is the baby one. And you've got these two in the middle, but a different year, 2003 and 2002. And then the super cuvée. <laughs> From 2000. Only in 2000. Yeah, only in very special years is this one made, so we're going to try them all. We've got the first Manitou. Okay, first of all, you swirl it around the glass. That releases the aroma of the wine, gives it more sort of smell. And that's why you see people doing it in restaurants and when they're wine tasting. So just give it a swirl, try not to spill. Stick your nose in. Your nose is much more sensitive than your palate is, so that's why people spend a lot of time sniffing. It smells amazing. Good fresh red fruit, strawberries, raspberries. I'm going to take a sip and then spit it out to my little cachoir or spittoon here. Wow, fruity. Yes, very light. Fresh very and fruity. Easy. Mm. Mm. Amazing. Okay. So, should we try the next one? Yeah. So, l'écri is a special part area parcel. So, this is from a, a vineyard, a single vineyard? Yeah, just above the cellar. Just above the cellar, yeah. okay, on the side of the hill. So, it's called l'écri. L'écri. And this is a two, 2003 vintage, which was a warm year, um, a very good year for, for, for reds. Um, not quite such a good year for white. Yeah, the colour is very... Compared to the last yeah. one, mm. much darker. I think it's, this wine is too stronger for the cheese. Definitely. Mm. This wine's probably more suited to roast Gibier. chicken. Yeah. Gibier, yeah, mm. Gibier. Mm. So Gibier. Game, mm. game dishes. So yeah. proper meaty dishes, yeah. not, not a cheese, of mm. course. Little taste. <laughs> okay. The final wine. Yeah. This should be quite a big one. Big style. Yeah. <laughs> so Sorry. 2000, 2000 was a, a very good year. Yeah. And Unusual. A special year. Special year because it's the millennium year. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So this was, you aged this in oak barrels. Yeah. Okay. So this will be a completely different style to the previous wines. And to be honest, I think this will be too big and powerful yeah. for, the, for the cheese too. Mm. Even the nose is strong, yeah. too strong. This is another wine that's suited to red meat dishes, full on main courses, I think. Yeah, big wine. 
I think, to be honest... It's the first one. The first one? Yeah. We both agree that um, the Menno Salon, Rouge, 2004, the Estate Red is exactly the right wine to go with our Sam Moore. And I think that Joe's going to agree with us. I'm sure we've got him on this one. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll see you again. Thank you, Anne. Bon see you soon. OK, merci. I've got to get going now because I need to go to Henri Bourgeois and Chavignol for my next cheese challenge. As Matthew set off for Chavignol, Joe continued his tour of the village of Chablis. His next stop would be one of its most famous domains. This is going to be an interesting guy to go and see. He's been a, a sort of frontiersman in some ways in Chablis production. He's tried new stuff, but he's kind of interesting because he keeps coming back all the time to the same old-fashioned ways. A bit of a legend, really, in winemaking. Michel. Joe. Bonjour. Can oh, I come yeah. in and try some of these fantastic cheeses uh, with you? This, is, right? on, Super. this is a gorgeous place. Michelle, you're not the first person who's had vineyards here, and not the first generation of the business. How far back does it go? For La Roche, uh, that was the grandfather of my grandfather in 1850 that started to have his uh, first uh, plot of vineyard. Mm -hmm. 150 years. Joe decided that the La Roche Chablis would best suit the Epoise cheese that I'd bought for him in Paris. I'm going to give myself three bits of cheese. And um, so this is with a 1996, the Reserve de l'Obédience. I suspect this is the tightest and the zestiest, and I could see this maybe being the... To me, when I taste the wine, I suspect that one is going to be the... It's going to be the one that'll really work. The best pairing, yeah. There's a quite a zesty, savoury character on the cheese. It's not the spicy. Mm. That, to me, is a really lovely match. The slightly honeyed character of the wine, matching brilliantly with the... The, the richness of the wine coming from Richness that. plus good acidity. Yeah, fantastic. And matching with the fat of the, this kind of cheese. Interesting. Now then, can we try the... The 93? 93. You know, there are, there are good days and then there's going and trying old Grand Cru Chablis yeah. with the winemaker in a cellar with a bit of cheese. It doesn't get much better than this, I don't think. So if I give myself a, a bit here. And how are you thinking 2004 is going to be for you? Good vintage? 2004, excellent. Mm -hmm. Really. Good wines, nicely balanced, good mm -hmm. acidity. We like to have the richness of the, of the fruit, the vintage, but at the same time keeping a good acidity. This is so important. Mm -hmm. mm. It's great wine, but it's, it's interesting that it doesn't have that very tight, quite citrusy acidity that comes through that's, that's balancing the cheese in the first one. And we'll give this third bottle a try as well, in 1990. 1990. The most amazing thing for, for I suppose, for, for people is when you come here, it's really quite small. I mean, Chablis is a globally important... Sure, Chablis is well. very well known. And when people come here, they're so surprised it's a tiny village. Tiny place. <laughs> tiny village, no traffic lights, as no. I say. <laughs> but it's very crowded at noon, just when the banks, when people leave the bank, oh, right. you know. The, Everyone's uh, off for lunch. Off for about two minutes, you know, it's, the traffic is difficult. A two-minute traffic jam. The colour on this is the most amazing thing. You sometimes forget that wine often isn't just about the taste. It looks fabulous. And... Colour. In these, with 15 years, you mm. get more um, darker colour. Mm. Mm. You know, to me, in, in many ways, I think that this is a wine that, as it opens and as it develops, mm. it's, it actually needs a more subtle food to really show the wine off. I agree. It's a beautiful bottle, mm -hmm. but the cheese is dominating a little. This, the uh, Reserve de l'Obédience 1996 Chablis Grand Cru is, is by far the best match. I mean, to me, yes. 
do you mind if I take one of these away and we'll go and uh, let the guys try this in Paris, see if they agree? Uh, uh, it will be a pleasure. You know that one we have won the uh, one of the year with uh, one enthusiast uh, and second uh, was uh, one of the year, one spectator in 1998 with this bottle of wine. Glad I've picked out the prize yeah. winner. Matthew, meanwhile, was getting close to his second destination. A village just outside Sancerre that is one of France's best kept secrets. This is the beautiful little hamlet of Chavignol tucked into a little gap in the hills and vines all surrounding it. Ancient little town, it's absolutely stunning. And here I'm going to try and track down Henri Bourgeois one of the town's most famous inhabitants. Ah, I've reached my destination, my sat nav's just told me. So I think he's next to the church. I'm here in the village of Chavignol in Sancerre. It's the most famous village in the region. And I'm at one of the most amazing wineries, Henri Bourgeois. It's here that this little goat's cheese is made as well, the Crottin Chavignol. And we're going to taste some of the wines to see which one goes best with this cheese. Bonjour, Arno. Bonjour. Matthew Jukes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And you've got some wines for me? Yes, of Sans course. Rosé? Absolutely. Fantastic. Where are we going to taste? We are going upstairs. Okay. Do you want to come with me Show now? me the way. Okay. Thank you. Let's go. You will taste. It's fantastic. Excellent. Lovely place. Right, it looks like You've laid out the whole story of, of Sancerre and Chavignol here. Absolutely. Got the soil? The soil. Fossils? Yeah. Yep. Incredible. Kima region moors, flinty soils. Flinty? Yep. And then we've got, um, listen, I'm going to put my Parisian bought cheeses down and look at your incredible range of different crottins. Yes, you have different stages of the crottin. Oh, I see. This one from September, for example, this one from August. Oh, so right, right. The evolution. I see. And, and then, the wine, most yes. importantly, Absolutely. your beautiful wines. Yes, some Sancerre Rosé coming from Pinot Noir. Uh -huh. And then uh, famous Mont d'Anne. Yes, come from, uh, from, from the hill, from literally yeah. outside the window. Fantastic. Exactly. And then this Sancerre coming from the rest of the vineyard in Chavignon. Okay. Great Sancerre. Brilliant. Look how beautiful that looks. Absolutely pure. Yeah, look how creamy it is. Oh, I see, yeah, okay. So you can tell the age because of the Absolutely. creaminess. Absolutely, yeah. Right. I have a little bit. Can I have a taste of this? You want a taste? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to taste the other small pot. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's one of my favorite cheeses. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so we'll first start with the uh, white Sancerre, the Baronne. Exactly. From the 2004 vintage? Yes. A good year? It was a fantastic and excited year. Yes. What do you think we're going to smell and taste in this one? I think the first flavour that you will get, it's very much near to the flowers yep. and also grapefruit. Okay. A lot grapefruit. of the grapefruit flavour. Okay, let's have a go at the Mondamne. The Mondamne. Which is, which is arguably the most famous vineyard. It is, yes, it is definitely the most famous vineyard. It's much richer on the nose, much, much more intense already. Exactly. A lot more flavour, a lot more nose. Goodness me, that's incredible. Really big and rich. Mm. Okay, that might be a little bit too strong for our cheese. Mm. Okay, let's have a go at the rosé. I think you're right. Maybe with the white meat, it's much better. Now yep. for the rosé. Now, rosé. I'm absolutely certain that my friend Joe, who's in Chablis at the moment, doing the same thing as I'm doing, is going to love this rosé sauce with the, the, the Crottin Chavignol. Yes. Fantastic combination. Yeah. So, let's have another sniff. a very accurate spit. We have to spit all the time in my job. Oh. I taste 35,000 wines a year. That's a lot. It's about 100 every day, so I have to spit all the time. I understand that. I don't spit so much. Yeah, but you're not driving. I <laughs> have to drive. you're driving now. <laughs> well, cheers. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And to the new marriage, Crotin Chavignol, three months old, and the Sancerre Rose Les Barons. Thank you. Arnaud. 
thank you very much. Thank I can't, I can't wait to show these to Joe. I think he's going to love them. Yeah, I hope that he will enjoy See you it. soon. Thank you for coming. Cheerio. Bye, bye. Hello. Hi, Matthew. It's Matt. And how are you getting on? Um, yeah, I'm in the middle of the Loire at the moment. I'm just about to head to Chateau Trassy to pick up a Puy Fume. It's a, a, a white wine that I think you're going to really, really like. Well, so, I'm um, sure I will. I'm sure I will. It's <laughs> good anyway. I'm, I'm, this big builder, Matthew. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. All right, well, I'll see you back in Paris. I'll, I'll struggle through till you get here. Joe's final stop in the village of Chablis was the Domaine Moreau. Hello. Stefan, hello. Nice to meet you. Joe Fatterini. Stefan, okay. thank you very much. Can I come in? How many bottles are there? Here, quatre vingt mille, eighteen zero zero, quatre vingt mille. What have you got for us? This first one is Ch Chablis. Chablis on Magnum 99? 99, old vineyard. Was 99 a good vintage for you? Or yes. Nice wines. Let's have a try. Now that's a nice, nice colour to that, isn't it? Very rich golden colour. And I'm going to try some with this Langre, which uh, has a... This is quite a powerful cheese. I'm wondering if it's going to be too much for the wine. Mmm, nutty, savoury cheese. Mmm. It's interesting, I thought the cheese would be too strong. Mm. Trop fort. Trop fort, yeah. But um, because it's quite a sweet wine, it's got this nice ripe fruit to it. It's a, it's a nice balance. Let's try another one here. Next we have, which should we try first? 2001? 2001. 2001 first. first. You made it, so you're the expert. <laughs> So this is Premier Cru Vaillon. Now I think I might have tried this wine before. Let's try it with this cheese. This is a, it's a hard job, but someone has to do it. Mm. Mm. That was really very nice. You have some minerality and some yeah. acidity when you finish. Which is balancing the slight fattiness in the cheese. It's balancing out that soft, fatty, um, savoury character in the cheese. It's also a bit salty. This there's a saltiness which is is nice with the the wine. Right, there's one more to go. Oh, this is good. Mm. This is 2000. This is quite a rare one, really. From 2000, good vintage again. Now then, this is earthier. I get more woodland, earthy flavours and, and aromas out of this. Still dry, still flinty and, and stony, but it's got more, more sort of uh, like an bark and flavours like that. Mm. Oh, that's good wine. I wonder if this isn't a more a seafood sort of wine, shellfish and so on. But we'll give it a try. Just the same. Nice with cheese. Mm. It's nice, but for me it's not the the veil. It had more sweetness to it. It had more of that that fruity, uh, sweet minerality, yes. which balances against that savoury character on the cheese beautifully. But this is a nice glass of wine. These are three very interesting, very different. And anybody who ever imagines that they're all just different vineyards, <laughs> needs to try that, it's totally different to that, it's totally different to that. For our challenge, mm -hmm. I think the wine that matches this cheese the best is the Vaillant. 
Is there a chance I could take a bottle of the Vaillant to Paris? Yes. And let the guys see what they think of it. Thanks very much indeed. It's so absolutely longer and Vaillant. Superb. Thank you very much indeed. Back in the Loire, Matthew was on the hunt for a very particular Puy Fumé. And we're going to cross the canal that goes alongside the Loire, and then we're going to cross the Loire proper onto the other side of the river. We're going to find our Puy Fumé producer, Chateau de Tracy, a gorgeous white wine producer. I know this estate pretty well. I've been buying the wines for many years, but I've never actually been there. Apparently it's really smart, so I'm looking forward to it. OK, here we are. Just turned in the front drive. The chateau looks absolutely spectacular. Quite sort of Disneyland style. Chateau Tracy is a private vineyard managed for over 300 years now by Nathalie Destudasse's family. Nice to meet you. Hi there. How are you? Natalie. Very well. I'm delighted to see you. Excellent. What a beautiful, beautiful place. We are very lucky because the sun is shining. It's incredible. It's amazing. Couldn't have better weather. <laughs> it's oh, fantastic weather. today. OK, I've got my cheese in the car here. Well. Come and have a look. Very fine. Got some sel sur cher from the Loire. We're going to try to match with my wine. With your puy fumé. Oui. OK? OK, very Let's good go. idea. Tell me yeah. about the, the yes. chateau. Look at that wing. Yeah? Uh, it's 17th century. 17th but century. But that wine is a joke. Look. This tower? Yes, because the grand grandfather had a bad idea, wanted to put another one. An extra and look, tower? Look the dates. 1421 yeah. down and look upstairs. 12? 12. I don't know how they <laughs> built it. <laughs> they built it upside it's down. It's incredible. <laughs> and how long have you had a vineyard here? We've been here since 16th century, the family. Right, here we are. So, I hope it's not too hot. Enough. Perfect. With the sun shining, Fantastic. that's all. The classic style of Puy Fumé is dry, tangy, lean, zesty, citrusy and sort of herbal. And basically, it lends itself to being perfect aperitif wine, but then you can drink it with um, the sort of cheese that we've matched it with today, I hope, plus um, salads and seafood, that sort of thing. Very, Lighter very dishes. good with seafood. Yeah. With, with goat cheese and all those cheese, sure. Okay, talking about cheese, just have a go and get the slice out of this. Beautiful salsa share. And see what the combination is like. Now, can I pass that to you? You have to, thank you. And also, I have to bear in mind this combination of cheese and wine must be perfect because my friend Joe is in Chablis right now, Good. doing the same test with mm -hmm. his cheeses. So we need to make sure, we need to decide which of these three is the best. Very interesting. Oh, that's gorgeous cheese. Oh, that's, that's a pretty good combination. It matches well. Mm -hmm. Really? The acidity of the wine cuts through the mm -hmm. creaminess of the cheese. So that's the 2004. So try the 2003 now. Yes, this is really so this is a absolutely different. Totally different. It's exactly as if the property was 200, 400 kilometers south, sir. Really? Ah, really? Because, you're, so, you're so going, because of the heat. You're going to tell me. I can see the color alone is darker. Yes, it's. Oh wow! <laughs> Feels like it's warm climate wine. It's hot. So. <laughs> Perhaps that's going to be too strong for the cheese. Maybe better with foie gras. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or dessert with yeah, some pudding. Yeah, dessert or, or, or maybe at the beginning. <laughs> okay, right. Well, I think that one loses. So, let's try the 2002. Let's try, yes, it's a classical one, that one. No, you can have a sniff. So the 2002, I think, perhaps is getting a little bit more developed, a little bit older, and maybe the flavour is too complicated for this cheese. Yes, really it is, and you're going to see after a few minutes, you're going to have new things. Flavours popping out. New flavours, yeah, yeah, flowers flavours, different flowers flavours. Let's go back to the 2004. Okay, go on. I think that the most exact match for me was the 2004. 
I think the freshness that the 2004 has really complements our beautiful cheese. I love the pitch. The Not freshness, you? yeah, gorgeous, yeah. That's the match. Um, if I could get two bottles off you to take back to Paris to show Joe and Matt, that would be fantastic. No problem. Right, that completes my mission. Just going to pop back to Sancerre, I think, and um, look at my notes, see what I've done, contemplate all of my choices, So I can't wait to present them to Matt and Joe when I get back to Paris. So, both Matthew and Joe had finished the task of pairing up their cheeses and their wines. It would now be a matter of taste back in Paris. Well, it's been almost exactly 48 hours since the boys went off. They should be back any minute now from the Loire, and I think that's Joe Waving. first from Chablis. Yes, it is. That's him. Yes, there's Matt. Right, here we go. Here he is. Hey, Joe. Matt, how are you? How was the trip? Absolutely fantastic. We had a fantastic time. Yeah. Brilliant. And Wonderful. more importantly, what's in the boot? Oh, we got some real treats in here for Let's you. Have a look. You're going to love them. Three top wines, and every one of them is there. And in a very nicely presented basket. Now, Isn't, doesn't that look beautiful? Lovely. No, they all go really well with the cheese. Well, I hope, I hope you agree. Well, I hope listen, you that'll be for you and Matthew and I to decide shortly. Listen, oh, I've set the table up again okay. in the park. So go and get yourself a seat. Matthew apparently is due any minute. No problem. We'll get him in and we'll get on with our cheese and wine party. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. So we've seen Joe back in from Chablis. This is Matthew. Back from the Loire. Waving away. Hopefully also with some lovely wine to go with the cheese that I gave him. Car looks all right. I think Matthew looks all right. How are you, mate? Hi there. How'd you go? Not bad. I got the bottles. Did you? Yeah. Good trip? Very good trip. Very exciting. You seem full of the joys of spring, you no, do. That's good. I'm really you pleased with now. Listen, I was very impressed with Joe's basket. Yours has even got a lid. There they are. Lovely. Lovely. One in a wooden box. Well, listen, Joe's by the picnic table. Should okay. we go and join yep. him and okay. have our cheese and wine Brilliant. party? Let's do it. Looks like we are just in time, Matthew. Hi, Joe. Certainly are. Hello there, Matthew. There just are. before we start tasting, the first thing I've noticed, viewers, <laughs> is Chateau de... How's that pronounced? Tracy, of course. Not Tracy. No. It's not Essex, this. No. this is wow. This is proper. <laughs> Crazy. So. Okay, well listen, should we start with the Chablis? Because you've sure. been here first and waiting yeah, patiently. Absolutely. I was also for the so where do you want us to start, Joe? I'll tell you what, we'll start in the middle with Daniel Dont. Okay. Uh, he's a lovely guy, went and saw him yesterday morning. Uh, this is his regular Chablis, and we needed to get something that would match up with the Chaos. First of all, I have a tiny bit of the old Chaos. Yeah. Which is pretty mild. Mm-hmm. Is nice it? It's not too salty. Sometimes yep. showers can have a real saltiness to it. I mean, this was a nice one. Well, that's quite, quite a good nose on the old Chablis. There's a professional reputation at stake here. It's worrying. Combination-wise, what do you want me to say? It's pretty accurate. It's pretty good. Thank you. The acidity cuts through. Mm -hmm. They're both quite light, both quite fresh. Mm. Enough flavour in the Chablis. It's a nice match. What do you think to this one? What do you think, Matt? Matt. I think that's a very nice combination. Is that right? Mm. It is. It's nice. It wasn't too intense. It wasn't too heavy. We tried some no. other wines, some bigger, richer, other yeah. ones. And this one was the uh, the nicest overall combination. Mm. Right. I'm going to pour this away. Yeah. And I'm going to get stuck into our second wine. Okay. Now, the second wine had to go with uh, this fellow, with the Epois. Okay. And this actually was one of the youngest that he showed us. Really? Well, how old is this one? His Chablis Grand Cru Reserve de l'Obedience 1996. Oh, we also tried a 93 and a 1990. Now, you plumped for this one, we why? We for this one. Well, we just thought Oops. it was the best combination. Now, this, isn't, this isn't a light cheese. It's not necessarily an easy, right. an easy go, this one. So this is a much stronger tasting combination than the last one, yes? Well, we hope so. Let's see what... The uh, is quite a strong cheese, It is quite it? a strong cheese. Is it? Reasonably. Cool. Full on. <laughs> Wow, wait, nice texture. Lovely, smooth, smooth and mm, pretty rich. There's though. a fattiness to it though, and that was there is actually. that worried us. Very creamy actually, despite mm. it being so strong. I can see this is a richer style anyway, because it's much, much darker than yeah. the, the previous one. Well done. That is utterly sensational. That's That's got to be one of the best Chablis I've ever tasted. 
and it's got more than enough power to cope with that cheese. That's one of the smelliest cheeses around. Just synergy is amazing. Mm. It's absolutely phenomenal. What? This combination of, of acidity and lots of structure that cuts through the fattiness of the cheese, mm. but then over and above it, this sweet, soft pillow of butterscotch flavours and all sorts. I'm absolutely blown away. I was convinced you'd need to, a red or something or something huge, but this just walks it. And I will open up the third mm -hmm. of our wines. Stefan Moro is the old school. He's taken over from his father. He's been taught by his father, only ever done two harvests outside of Chablis. Okay. So here we go. Now, now what's is, the cheese that you've chosen? This it goes with the long, longer, which is a, a funny looking cheese. Very, very funny. About to walk off the, off the cheese board there. Well, it's, <laughs> it is rather, rather runny. This is a Premier Cru Vaillon from 2001. Right. So again, we tried two or three different wines, uh, some bigger, some smaller. Yeah. Let's see what you think of this combination. Right, so this shouldn't be as strong as the Epois the Long style, is that right? It shouldn't be. It right, shouldn't here we go. It's quite creamy, but the flavour's not as intense, no. that's for sure. No. That's actually really lovely. It's got a nice savoury character to yeah. it. Yeah. It's slightly, slightly burnt, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is earthy, exactly, that's it's the right like word. Mm. Okay. And smoky. Interestingly enough, when we, when we had to go through the wines, let's see, I think there's a slightly earthy a slightly smoky character to this. It's um, it's got a wildness to it in, in some ways. Mm. Mm. That's amazing. So we've actually sort of downgraded the size of the flavour of the cheese and the flavour of the wine a touch. Yeah. It actually ends up pretty harmonious. But the two of them both have certain characteristics that seem to overlap. They both seem to be slightly old fashioned in some ways. There's, a, there's an earthiness from the soil and the mineral. This nose is coming out now. It's really opening up. There's, there's, there's more there. Well, how would you sum up Joe's uh, attempt to combine the three cheeses that he went off to Chablis with, with the wines he's chosen? Well, re reluctant as I am to be very kind to his selection. He's done, he's, done, <laughs> he's done awfully well, really impressive. I would have thought, to be honest, Chablis is a white, dry style of wine. Yeah. I thought it would just go with the first style of cheese, the Chaos, the light. And then struggle with the strongest. Struggle taste. with the strong ones. And actually, as you say, if you rev up the flavour of the cheese, mm. rev up the quality of the wine. Mm -hmm. Brilliant okay. effort. Okay. Well, you were very happy with Joe's choices and how it worked out. Let's see how happy he is with yours. Yeah, I've gone for a, a, a red, a rosé and a white. Right, where do you want to start? We'll start, we'll go backwards. We'll start with a red. Okay. Yeah, because um, you'll see I would why. have thought you'd ended with the red. No, but... because I want to give you a little bit of a taste test as well. So which is this cheese? This is the San Mor de Terrain. Yeah. So it's from locally from the Loire. Yeah. Goat's uh, cheese. Goat's cheese. Beautiful, beautiful flavour. Mm -hmm. We went to um, an estate called uh, Henri Pelle mm -hmm. in Menatou Salon. Menatou Salon is not very well known, yep. but it's a smack bang next to Sancerre, which is mm. the famous place in the Loire. Which is interesting because Sancerre is often the great goat's cheese combination, but here we have a red with it. What, what do you reckon? It's very fruity indeed. Lots of light cherry flavours, not. Mm. Rich, thick, bitter, bitter cherry mm. flavors, light cherries, light berries, currants, that sort of thing. Look, lovely red currant flavors. Yeah, combination. it is. It's, it's funny. It's a it's surprising um, one too. Well, we tasted four reds there. Mm. And this was the lightest of the lot and the cheapest of the lot as well. I'm really impressed with that. I think that's a fantastic combination. It works really beautifully because it's relatively simple. It's it's a relatively simple cheese flavor as well. Mm. So the two of them would end up clashing if you've got some big bruising wine. It yeah. just walk all over it. Yeah. It's a nice little blend. Great. Well done. So you've ticked his first box. Yay. Let's have a look at bottle number two and cheese number two, for yep. that matter. Where do we go next? Um, an incredible combination this is. Absolutely one of my favourites. I went to the village of Chavignol in Sancerre. OK, so obviously it ties in with the cheese straight away. It's exactly where the cheese is made. Wow. Yeah, so this guy lives where the cheese is it's made. not the same guy. No, no, just down the road though. OK. Only a few yards away. And I chose an unlikely style of wine, a rosé, a Sancerre rosé. Quite a rare style of wine. I was going to say, it's not known, I don't think, is it? It's not well known. Rosé, though, is a, a category. People Ooh. are drinking a lot more rosé these yeah. days. And, and good Why on them, is that? there's so much better wines. Right. People have learned how to make rosés really well in the last mm. two or three years, when you say, man. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's got wild strawberries, for me, is the, is the yeah. number one tasting notes. And they're lovely, zesty wild strawberries with a floral character to it as well. It's light. It's got a real lift mm. on that palate. We're at the combo. Tangy cheese, yeah. just perfect. Sits along really nicely. Yeah. And it's all happening at the back of your tongue. It's not straight up front sweet flavours. It's all sitting. It's a bit more subtle. And uh, I kind of felt it was um, it was a sort of perfect lunchtime combination. Mm. A little goat's cheese salad mm -hmm. with a glass of rosé. 
perfect, perfect combo. Yeah. Sort of thing everyone should be doing. And a lazy afternoon to follow. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> no, it is a good combination. It's surprising. It kind of grows on you after 20, 30 seconds. <laughs> and there is a certain beauty to the same village, same wine, same mm. cheese. Brilliant. Wow. Love it. Cool. Excellent. So far, so good. Two ticks out of two. I'm sure you're happy with that. Yep. We're moving on to my, well, I think it's going to be my personal favourite. I've got a bank of the third one. Just for the name. <laughs> Chateau de Tracy. Well said. What can you tell us about it? Well, this is a Puy Fumé. Aha. Uh -huh. Made in the same style as Sancerre. I'm a big fan of Puy Fumé. Made from the Sauvignon Blanc grape variety, mm. everyone's favourite. Yeah. And made in an incredibly smart chateau. Um, Whereabouts in the Loire? Right on the river, yep. in Puy sur Loire. Aha. Uh -huh. Hence um, the name. Hence the name. And literally, you could see the, the river from the chateau. Now, the cheese. Yep. Yeah. Just while you get the cheese sorted out, first impressions on the nose. I'm straight away getting this classic, you, it's textbook, um, blackcurrant leafiness out of it. And just talk us through the cheese then, Matthew. This is Celle sur Cher. Mm -hmm. It's made just a bit further down the Loire River. Right. Um, very fresh, very light, very creamy, refreshing cheese, if you, if, you, if you know what I mean. Now, check out the combo. I reckon that this flavour of Sauvignon Blanc, like a rapier sharp, a sort of acidity thrust, a citrusy thrust, cuts through the palate, cleans up the palate, adores the cheese, and it's so refreshing. And if people have had Sauvignon Blanc from elsewhere in the world and they've loved the big fruitiness of them, this is where they pull back a little bit on the fruit, but they really drive forwards with the character and the core of it. it and it is, it's that thrust of flavour. Mm. And it works so much better with food. You, you seriously can't get classier Puy Fumé than this estate. No, that's terrific. And it's not that expensive a wine, it'd be just north of a tenner. Right. So, um, so, so really for an ultimate combo. So Tracy that. could afford a bit of Tracy. She could, absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you reckon on that uh, that combo? I love that. That yeah. really is incredibly impressive. It has been a, a growing, developing story because I think these wines have got bigger and more impressive in yeah. the combinations. A bit of a sort through. of... Yeah, you where you seven. went roller coaster, he's just gone takeoff. Revved up. Well, to conclude, boys, first of all, can you pick a combination that you could call a favourite from the three you've tried of Matthews? I certainly can, and whilst the, tr the, the Tracy is fantastic, for me there is almost a magical combination of, of the Rosé and, and the Crottin mm. coming from the same village. It just works wonderfully. Are you happy with this choice? I'm, I'm delighted, yeah, I think that's great. Thank you. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all, I'm sure. Now, what about your choice of combination from, from Joe's? Well... I am not an Epoise eater. I think it's a very strong cheese. Mm. I think that the way that you handled that with what is to all intents and purposes a dry white wine was magnificent. I know it's expensive, but it proves that white wine really can do anything. And the combination of the Grand Cru La Roche Chablis with the Epoise was absolutely majestic. Mm. You've certainly uh, well raised my palate for cheese and wine. This Good. is a cheese and wine party that I didn't think I would experience. And I think I know what I'll be doing for the next few nights, certainly for dinner. Excellent. I think it's time to say Cheers. thank you very much. Cheers, cheers. What can we say except santé? <laughs> <laughs>